I'll see you in 15 minutes. Thanks. Can you bring the bed pan when you come back? Mm-hmm. having a hypersensitivity reaction to incompatible blood types. Wait a minute. That is not what a hypersensitive reaction looks like. <laughs> Let's try this again. Ah! Let's try this again! I want to get some brains. I need salt. Seriously, guys? Let's talk to a panel of experts. on the surface of the donor red blood cells enter the host's body, the anti-B antibodies attach themselves to the B antigen and form the antigen-antibody complex. This immediately activates the classic complement pathway. A series of proteins go into action, the first of which is C1. C1 attaches itself to the antigen-antibody complex. C2 approaches and C1 splits C2 into C2A and C2B. While that's happening, C4 also approaches C1, which is split into C4A and C4B. C2B and C4B combine to create C3 convertase, an enzyme that splits C3 into C3A and C3B. C3A moves on to enhance the acute inflammatory response. C3B attaches themselves to the antigen-antibody complex in a process called opsonization. C3B acts as a binding site for phagocytes on the antigen-antibody complex. At the same time, a globulin protein called proparidin interacts with C3 convertase to create C5 convertase. C5 convertase splits C5 into C5A and C5B. C5 a helps in the inflammatory response and draws white blood cells to the site in a process called chemotaxis. C5B interacts with C6 through C9 proteins to create a membrane attack complex, or MAC. The C9 proteins form a ring that insert itself into the foreign cell membrane. This creates a hole that allows a sudden influx of water and sodium into the cell, which lights it. While this is happening, the body's pre-existing anti-B antibodies agglutinate the foreign B antigens on the donor red blood cells. Essentially what this means is that the antibodies will clump together with the antigens to create large antigen-antibody complexes that are highly visible to circulating macrophages and therefore more likely to be susceptible to phagocytosis. Macrophages bind with the C3B on the antigen-antibody complex and the phagocyte begins to engulf the foreign cell with extensions from its cell membrane called pseudopods. The cell is completely engulfed in what is now called a phagosome. It binds with lysosomes within the phagocyte and the resulting vacuole is now referred to as a phagolysosome. The lysosomes digest the foreign cell and spit out the cell debris through the phagocyte's cell membrane in a process called exocytosis. These cell fragments are then displayed on the surface of the phagocyte as B-type antigens. The phagocyte is now referred to as an antigen-presenting cell, or APC. The APC secretes interleukin-1, which is a cytokine that stimulates the production of B and T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes differentiate into T helper cells, which bind to the APC and allow B cells to be activated. 
This is referred to as T-dependent humoral immune response. The B cells then divide into B memory cells that remain in the body ready for the next exposure and B plasma cells, which make antibodies. In our case, these antibodies would be anti-B. These processes continue simultaneously until all the foreign RBCs are destroyed. Well, that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look about how the signs and symptoms would present in our patients. An acute hemolytic reaction may be mild or severe and it will develop within 15 minutes of the initiation of the transfusion. The signs and symptoms may include chills, fever, lower back pain, flushing, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypotension, vascular collapse, hemoglobinuria, jaundice, bleeding, acute renal failure, shock, cardiac arrest, or death. Oh shit! <laughs> 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 